WBGO Newark. We're on air, online, on your mobile device. That's Mulgrew Miller from uh, his uh, recording, the sequel, Mulgrew with the group uh, Wingspan, with uh, Steve Nelson and uh, Steve Wilson, as well as Richie Goods and Kareem Riggins. Uh, beginning things uh, this hour, as we have Mr. Miller and uh, David Dempsey, who uh, lead the uh, Jazz Studies program at William Patterson University, Mulgrew, the director and Dave, the uh, coordinator of the program, a wonderful concert coming up uh, this Sunday at 4 p.m. at William Patterson University. They're celebrating the 35th anniversary of their Jazz Room Series, and uh, it's going to be quite a concert. Uh, Mulgrew and uh, David, thank you for uh, stopping by this afternoon. Good to see you both. Thank you, uh, Ulysses. I, I, I'm pleased to be here. Well, I guess Thanks. this Me morning, too. this morning, I don't want to move ahead too quickly. This morning. <laughs> You know, uh, it's early in the morning for me, too. Uh, it's good to uh, see both of you guys. Thank you. And, um, you know, most people who are familiar with jazz education know the reputation of William Patterson. And this jazz room series is a, a pretty special thing for you guys. Now, as I mentioned, it's the 35th anniversary. The program itself has been around for 40 years. This series, 35 uh, let's talk a little bit about the history of the series, David. How did this uh, get started? Well, my predecessor, actually, there's only been two people in my job in 40 years, myself and Marty Criven, Martin Criven. And when Marty started the program, as soon after it started, it became obvious that the students needed a, more performance outlets besides just playing during the day for each other on campus and so it started this series actually in the school cafeteria mm. where they would bring out artists uh, sort of in a jam session format and that students would come up and play i think joanne brackeen was the first person and they had a piano in the corner of the cafeteria, and they'd put up a stage and lighting. And, of course, then the crowds, after a few years, got so big they had to move it to Shea Auditorium, where it lives today. But the students are still involved. Every uh, concert is preceded by a, a student ensemble. That's one of our 24 jazz groups. Mulgrew's group played just last Sunday. So there's still that student involvement, but now it's, over the last 35 years, really been a who's who of the jazz world on our stage. Yes, and uh, taking a look at the history of the uh, program, you can see uh, how many luminaries have been uh, participating in this uh, over the years. Uh, Mulgrew, who, you've been now director of the program since uh, 2006, I believe? Five. Five, 2005. And, um, and um, you know, I, You've been performing over the years in so many different contexts. So I can imagine that uh, this particular series is uh, is unique and certainly gives you an opportunity to uh, to present to the students in particular, uh, you know, your experiences uh, in a variety of different settings. Uh, how, how strongly do you feel about this series and what it does for the students? Oh, I, I feel very strongly. It's important for them to get a, a real picture of what's going out there in the jazz world and to come in contact with the um, artists who are actually out there doing it, you know, and see, so we're able to bring in um, all sorts of people, you know, um, Benny Golson and, and uh, who, have, you know, significant names in, in the music industry. Now, tell us about this particular program that's coming up on Sunday, uh, about the celebration and stuff. How, how did this particular show come together? Well, we uh, actually contacted, we did something that's very unusual for the jazz room. Usually, we'll contact an artist and say, you decide the music, you decide the band. But in this case, we actually formed this band of alumni that actually graduated from different eras. And... Uh, each of the um, alumni had played with several of the others, but this band has never existed before uh, this Sunday. So we have uh, Fred Hendricks on trumpet, who actually will be here again the next Sunday. I believe he's been a member of the Basie Band now for a couple of years. So Fred keeps on appearing on our series in different guises, but never actually fronting a band. And we have Anton Denner on saxophone, pianist Matt King, who won the... Uh, 
uh, Thelonious or was very involved, finished very high in the Thelonious Monk competition after he graduated. Doug Weiss on bass, who's a busy mm-hmm. bassist around New York, and Joe Farnsworth on right. drums, who graduated just as I got there in '92. And of course, he's been on the road with Diana Krall and Cedar Walton and all sorts of people. So it's a gr- great group. Again, this concert coming up this Sunday at 4 p.m. at William Patterson University. The Jazz Room Series is celebrating 35 years with this uh, super band that David just uh, told you about. It's the longest-running jazz series on a college campus in the country. And speaking of uh, Freddie Hendrix, we're going to play something uh, from a recording by bassist Rufus Reed. And speaking with Rufus, uh, speaking of Rufus, I should say, yes. he was uh, also a director of the program for some 20 years, right? Yes, that's right. He succeeded Thad Jones. Right. He was... You know, everything connects to everything else. Yeah, Thad, yeah. when he was here, the Thad Jones Mel Lewis Quartet was in residence on campus. You know, on a, you'd go on a Tuesday afternoon to the library, and there you'd see Thad and the quartet set up playing tunes in front of the library. Right. And Rufus was the bassist. So when Thad departed to Denmark, Rufus took over, quote unquote, just for a week or two. Uh, and that just turned into 20 years. How many stories so. are there like that? And well, to the benefit of everybody. Uh, I, That's you know, for sure. I certainly would imagine. So we're going to hear something from a Rufus Reed recording that uh, Freddie Hendrix is a part of. This uh, CD called The Gatekeeper. And uh, we're going to hear uh, a tune called You Make Me Smile with uh, Freddie Hendrix a part of this group. As uh, we have David Dempsey and Mulgrew Miller here in our studios on this Wednesday morning. Jazz 88 WBGO Newark. That's bassist Rufus Reed, a uh, 2003 recording of his uh, entitled The Gatekeeper, and that uh, was You Make Me Smile with Freddie Hendricks on the trumpet, Rich Perry uh, on the saxophone, John Stetch at the, at the piano, and Demontez Coleman uh, on uh, the drums joining Rufus Reed and uh, Freddie Hendricks, a part of the alumni band that will be performing at William Patterson University this uh, Sunday at 4 p.m., the super band, Freddie and Joe Farnsworth and uh, others in this band. And uh, by the way, Rich Perry, uh, David, as you mentioned, a uh, member of the faculty at uh, William Patterson. That's correct. We have uh, four of us on the full-time faculty, Mulgrew and myself, and uh, actually two fine trombonists. This must be some law against hiring two trombonists, but (laughs) we've done that to great value. We have Tim Newman, great bass trombonist who helps me run the Summer Jazz Series. And uh, then uh, Pete McGinnis has just joined us, who's a, it's like hiring four guys, great arranger, great right. trombonist and singer. But then we have 20 adjunct faculty who come out each one day a week, and they each have one of our 24 ensembles and each teach a studio of students. So Rich is one of those people. Rich and Vincent Herring are right. our two saxophonists. So everybody's happy having both of them. Here. Mulgrew Miller and David Dempsey, the director and uh, coordinator of the Jazz Studies Program at William Patterson University, with us here at Jazz 88 this morning. Let's talk uh, a bit, David, about the history of this program for those who aren't familiar with the beginnings of uh, the whole uh, uh, program at William Patterson. Uh, give us a, a, a sense of, of, of how this program got started. Well, it started with a stroke of genius from my predecessor um, in hiring Thad Jones, and that uh, 40 years ago really created a model that a lot of schools follow now, which is bringing uh, major league jazz artists on the faculty full-time, not just in as a, a resident person, not just sort of in for a few days, but living there, being there every week. And, of course, Mulgrew is... A shining example of that, and the students that that 's the model that the the program has followed for all these years to have that artistic leadership from somebody who has spent their life on the road in the studios making this music directly into the classroom it 's all connecting the students directly with the reality of the music not not just over the history but also today. Now, as far as the director of the program uh, is concerned, after Thad, uh, the directorship uh, went from Thad to Rufus, and then, uh, as we mentioned, Rufus there for some 20 years, and then the uh, very uh, talented, uh, the late uh, pianist James Williams taking over from Rufus uh, before Mulgrew took over. Uh, and uh, Mulgrew, I know that um, 
you taking over this program from James was particularly uh, poignant and, and important to you because I know you had a very close relationship with him. Yeah, um, I hope the the listener listeners will forgive me for being so uh, personal in my recollections of James Williams, but uh, he was uh, so great uh, in every way. He was a great pianist, a great composer, and I knew James for hmm, better of 31 years or so, you know. We were close friends. He was like a big brother to me. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I, I always say James was really cut out for this. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. he had uh, before coming to William Patterson, he had taught at Berkeley School of Music. And um, as a matter of fact, when I first met James, he was going to teach at we um, at Berkeley School of Music. So uh, you know, besides being a brilliant uh, musician and uh, composer who's a great humanitarian I like to say that mm-hmm. because a lot of people don't know that about mm-hmm. James and um, um, he was just uh, cut out for being a teacher you know sharing and giving so much uh, to you know students and and um, big shoes to step in mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and you know I can the thing about being an educator and a teacher in general but specifically when you're talking about um, music and jazz music in particular is that that kind of, of, of uh, humanity ends up being very significant in terms of how effectively you can impart the lessons that you're you're teaching to the students. So when you have someone who is like you said and uh, cut out to be it and musicians it seems like everyone isn't necessarily um, cut out for that or don't necessarily think in terms of education. Mm-hmm. Uh, but those who do, um, and not only do they perform a very important uh, um, role, uh, but uh, I can imagine it being very fulfilling personally uh, in terms of what you're able to do in terms of uh, uh, educating the next generation of musicians uh, uh, um, and uh, helping them along in terms of, uh, of their careers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, uh, as being the person who chaired the search committees that found both James and Mulgrew, now that we found them, we knew they right. were there. I guess we allowed them to find us, maybe. Um, you know, that that list is surprisingly small mm-hmm. of people, artists at that level, who are willing to give Right. At that level, right? And, a well, rarity. I, I, you know, I can speak personally, and it's interesting that Mugu made those comments about James. You know, it 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 makes perfect sense that he would be the one to to take the baton uh, because uh, he's in that mode as well. And and you know, when you have musicians like that, uh, it makes uh, such a huge difference uh, in uh, in your program. It does, and you know, Mugu succeeded James when James graduated from Memphis State Mulgrew was the next pianist right. in that college jazz ensemble right. Mulgrew there was what one pianist between the two of you and Art Blakey's band yeah my career seemed to just <laughs> yeah. dovetail his in every kind of way yeah. and I didn't foresee this whole William Patterson thing happening mm-hmm. I said here we go again. <laughs> <laughs> it made but, perfect sense to me. Yeah, yeah. It still does but every I'm so, day. I'm so happy that it happened. You know, I'm having a great time. Yes, indeed. Yeah.